In this video, I'd like to walk through the edit that I did of this infrared photo of an aloe polyphylla, also known as a spiral aloe. This was originally shot uh, with a 590 nanometer uh, uh, infrared filter, um, and I was fortunate enough to have this selected uh, to be uh, the cover of our local uh, voter information guide for the upcoming primary election. So uh, that was very, uh, very nice honor to have the, uh, this photo selected to be on the cover. So what I want to do is walk through uh, the edits that I did for this photo, maybe some of the, the early challenges that I had with this photo, and kind of some of the breakthroughs that I made to get it to the point where it ended up. So um, in editing a photo, an infrared photo like this, um, what I'm typically going to do is start by putting in a color profile. So we've got the, by default, the Adobe color profile, which is terrible for infrared photos. Um, so I will select uh, a profile that I've created. There'll be a link up above where you can see a video on how to create your own uh, color profile for your camera uh, to, to uh, apply to infrared photos. And the reason that we do this color profile um, is so that we can get a better selection of uh, white balance. So now that I've applied the color profile, I can go into color here and um, I can select uh, the rocks, which will give me a good bit of color separation, uh, the baby blue of the, the plant and uh, the darker uh, brownish colors of the rocks. Now, if I was shooting um, something that had some sky or, you know, more elements, it might make more sense to uh, go out to Photoshop and do a, a channel swap, but um, there there's just wasn't a lot of benefit to a photo like this. So what I'll typically do here uh, in a start is um, do a little bit of um, uh, color work. So uh, we'll increase the contrast here a bit um, and then come down into effects. And I typically like to add a little uh, dehaze and a little bit of clarity. Um, so that's uh, so we're, we're looking good there. Um, but the challenge that I started to run into with this with this image is that um, there's really two points of interest. You have uh, the the uh, the aloe itself uh, with this you know amazing pattern um, but then it, but it's it's almost like a, um, a very low contrast uh, within the plant itself but then you have this more rich richer tapestry of background with the rocks and the plants that are that are there and I found this um, to be pretty distracting like my eye was kind of all over the place and I really wanted to hone in on the main subject. Um, and the way, the, the way that I realized that I had to do that was to get away from color because the color in this image was just becoming way too distracting. So then I would go back into the profile. Um, and instead of using one of the profiles that I created, I'll look in camera matching. Um, and because this is a uh, Fuji um, image, um, I've got these across options. So a, a standard black and white, a black and white with a green filter, with a red filter, and with a yellow filter. That's these first four options here. Um, and so for, to get the most amount of contrast, I selected uh, the across with the green filter. And okay, so now heading down a completely different path for the edit. Um, so what I need to do here is to start is to bring up the exposure because the exposure at this point is just way too dark. Um, the contrast looks good, uh, but we want to start to um, uh, drop some of the drop the highlights a bit and drop the blacks a touch. So now I'm going to go down into the effects area. Uh, we'll add a smidge of texture um, and. Here's where the, one of the first big breakthroughs for me came is that uh, normally when I'm dealing with uh, clarity in, in my infrared or even visible photos, I love the clarity slider. It adds a lot of uh, uh, nice contrast, but I typically don't go above 25 because the, uh, the effects in, in uh, typical photos, uh, the, the, the strength of it is just too much. It's over the top. Uh, but in black and white, you can actually go a little bit stronger. Um, and that's where I started to really, you know, uh, dive into this photo and start to add uh, some, some more punch. The same thing with dehaze. Dehaze, I don't typically like to go above uh, 10 or 15 in a photo. I like, I like the, the contrast that it adds, but it can get out of control pretty quickly. But in this type of subject, you'll notice that 
that punching up the dehaze really starts to dig into some of this uh, contrast within the middle of the plant. And now I've got this this depth, this 3D feel to, to the, 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 that I'm really looking for. Uh, if I go back up into uh, the light section and I click on the levels, I can create a, a custom uh, curve to further accentuate uh, some of the contrast. And I'll do another dot here at the low end as well. Okay. So there we go. So that um, really further increases the, the contrast of this image. Um, down, Heading down into the details panel, because it's a Fuji image, I'm going to reduce the amount of sharpening because I don't want to get any of the, the warmish effects from the default settings being too high in Lightroom. Um, I'll drop the detail a little bit, and I'm going to increase the masking because I really only want uh, sharpening to occur on the edges um, that the strong edges not everywhere in the image. I'm going to add a little bit of uh, noise reduction, not too much. This is the point where I'm really starting to like where the photo is looking, but I still have a little bit of this distraction problem. Um, there's this great detail around all the edges, there's the yellow itself, uh, is too distracting. And the way that I'm going to get around that um, is to use a vignette. So I'm going to go into effects, and Vignette is another one where I would typically only go to, say, negative 15 in, in a typical image because I just want the vignette to be subtle. I don't want it to be noticeable. I just want it to casually, subtly draw your eye to the center of the image. But in this case, we don't want to be subtle. Uh, so I'm going to really crank down into a, a really strong vignette, uh, much stronger than I would normally. And I'm going to take the midpoint way down because that's going to really help draw me towards the center of the image. Now, in this case, uh, because I have a, uh, a circular subject in the middle, um, I don't want to, you know, the, the roundness, you know, would normally lean towards a, the sort of a rectangular style. But because I have a circular subject, I'm going to go all the way to 100 because I want the, the, the center to be the absolute focus. So that's much better. So now the eye's really drawn into the center. Um, there's still a little bit of distraction in the upper right of the image. So what I'll do is I'll create a graduated filter. Um, and I will just drag in here a little bit. And then we'll go to light and we'll just drop the exposure about a half stop there. So that will help uh, remove that distraction. And then one more thing that I'm going to do is I'll add another... Um, a filter at this time a radial filter to the center uh, because I just want to continue to punch up uh, what's what's going on here in the center okay so we will take um, our shadows and we'll drop the shadows a little bit and we'll drop the blacks a lot to really help create that punch okay so there we have it. So that is pretty close to uh, the, the final edit that I, that I actually used for this image. Um, and you can, if, we, if I go down here to the revert options, you can kind of see how dramatically different that looked from uh, the original um, uh, before. So this is uh, before, and then this is after. So there we go. So that is uh, a look at the editing process that I went through for this uh, spiral aloe. A photo shot in uh, originally in color infrared with a 590 nanometer filter, but then edited to a very uh, distinct uh, black and white photo. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks so much.